One of the most visually striking structures signifying the presence of Cylon forces among the various Battlestar Galactica series are the capital ships known as Base Stars, also referred to as Base Ships. In this video, I'd like to talk about the history and lore of these iconic vessels across the various Battlestar Galactica installments. In the original series, Base Stars served as a combination of aircraft carrier and capital warship. These massive vessels dwarfed all other colonial ships, consisting of two flattened cones connected at the center by a thick pylon, giving them a conical, saucer-like appearance. They also held the reputation for being practically impenetrable, having only been destroyed on two confirmed occasions. These massive structures are capable of carrying and supporting over 300 raiders, which are fighter vessels that serve as a mainstay in the Cylon arsenal. The base ship moved at considerably slow speeds and relied mostly on its fighter complement to deal with enemy ships. Typically, these ships are accompanied by four squadrons of raiders for defense and attack. In addition to the raiders, base stars also contain a full complement of armored landing craft used for planetary subjugation. They are also armed with missiles, two long-range Mega Pulsar weapons, and over 100 defensive laser turrets to shoot down enemy fighters. Deemed a floating killer by Colonel Tai, these warships present a formidable threat to the forces of the Twelve Colonies. Base stars are also designed for planetary orbital bombardment and serve as a moving base of operations for the Cylon fleet. It is suggested that the scanners on the base stars in the original series have a much longer range than that of the colonial battle stars, as Baltar's base star is able to follow the fleet while staying outside of the Galactica's scanning range. The inner core of these vessels is said to be specifically sealed and shielded, serving as the command center from which IL series Cylons, including the Imperious Leader, operate. In the event that a base ship would suffer severe hull damage, this core can be jettisoned and can travel up to 10 light yarn. A few of the base stars serve the purpose of repairing and maintaining centurions. It is on these ships that the parts and materials are recycled from Cylons who have been irreparably damaged. The base star class from the original series also existed in the reimagined version continuity, albeit likely with a different command and crew structure. A model of the original series base star is displayed in Galactica's new museum in the miniseries, and also appeared in flashbacks in the made-for-TV film Razor. This is clearly a callback to the original show, however the weapons used in the reimagined series differ from the original, with a large difference being that these new base stars rely primarily on chemically propelled missiles, with both nuclear and conventional warheads for defensive and offensive engagements. This first variant of the base star deploys raiders from eight individual access points. As is the case with later iterations, these command ships are also capable of operating within a planet's atmosphere. A second variant base star came onto the scene sometime before the 10th year of the First Cylon War. This model features two Y-shaped hulls in tandem alignment, with a top and bottom hull, similar to the first variant, and missile launchers located between the arms of the ship along the central axis. Towards the end of the First Cylon War, a third iteration prototype base star was built by the Cylons in roughly the same shape as the modern base star. It was in this variant that a group of Centurions calling themselves Guardians fractured from the Cylon majority. It is believed that their goal was to escape to the far reaches of space to avoid being shut down and replaced by their modernized, non-sentient successors. Shortly after its discovery, the only base star of this type known to exist was destroyed by colonial forces. Sometime during the Cylon's absence and before the fall of the Twelve Colonies, the modern base star model was designed and constructed with two offset Y-shaped hulls attached at their centers by a single pylon, this warship has a distinctive star shape. This model can also rotate into a tandem Y configuration, which is used for entry into a planetary atmosphere. The modern base stars are also equipped with a superior jump system, and while they contain no visible means of sublight propulsion, they are capable of chasing down a battle star. One aspect of the modern base ship that makes it unique is its organic nature. 
They are largely composed of organic resin with a large flesh-like interior. Interestingly, just like any other injured organism, the base star is able to heal any damage it suffers in battle over time. The organic components of the structure are networked and connected to the ship's brain, known as a hybrid, which is a biomechanical Cylon integrated into the ship's mainframe and essentially the personification of the ship. Data and other functions, such as analyzing visual information, are handled within a liquid computer interface that resembles a stream of water flowing over a luminous glass surface. The humanoid Cylons aboard these base stars can interact with the main computer by placing their hands in these basins. The layout of these ships consists of several conventional rooms and hallways, with a few rooms being furnished with what would be considered human objects, such as beds and couches. While sleek in appearance, the features are generally bland. However, the ability of humanoid Cylons to project different surroundings is used to navigate ship corridors more easily and to provide them with an individually pleasing environment. Habitation for humanoid Cylons and their centurion servants exist within the central section of the structure, with a computer room housing the hybrid. Generally, a modern base star is armed with some 220 missile launchers located on the central spire and on the arms of the vessel. These are capable of carrying nuclear or conventional tipped ship-to-ship -ship warheads, as well as long-range ballistic missiles, which are able to strike planetary targets from high orbit. In conflicts with the colonial fleet, their ship-to-ship -ship missiles are easily defended against by colonial electronic countermeasures. This results in the Cylons' reliance on their squadrons of raiders for both offensive and defensive purposes. These modern base ships can carry up to 792 raiders, launched from storage bays located on each arm of the ship. These raiders are typically sent out to swarm the enemy target, while the base star is able to deploy ship-to-ship -ship missiles to cover the fighters. The base star is also able to deploy heavy raiders, which can serve as an armored shuttlecraft and gunship that can be used to transport a number of Centurion model fighters as a boarding party. The Cylon fleet tends to rely on overwhelming force to defeat their enemy, since unlike the original series iteration, the modern base star is not heavily armored, nor does it appear to have point defense batteries. Rather than acting as a frontline battleship, these base stars serve more as carriers for raiders, relying on long distance engagements. As such, they are quite vulnerable to colonial battle stars in close range combat when they lack fighter support. One element of the Cylon fleet that was emphasized in Ronald D. Moore's series was their advanced and formidable hacking abilities, which the base ships with their raiders utilized to bring about the swift and widespread destruction of colonial vessels in the fall of the Twelve Colonies. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Cylon base star. Is there a particular model or feature of these ships that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Battlestar Galactica and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.